We are well into the mid-90s on this Thursday in Denver today. That's the 21st day that we've climbed into the 90s this year. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. Those numbers already put us at the 13th most 90-degree days on records. And our blistering start to summer puts us on pace to see about 55 to 60 of them this year. Mm, how about that? 90 plus. If you can't beat the heat, get out of the kitchen. You know that expression. It's hard if you're in a food truck, though. Civic Center Eats happening today for lunch. Crowds still showed out to grab a bite from the local food trucks, some shielding themselves from the heat with the umbrellas. Our photojournalist Brian Wendelin talked to one worker about how he stays cool when the temperatures rise. With the right equipment, you do stay cool. So like with this guy, it goes around my neck, and I soak it with water, and it allows me to get cold air and cold water and helps with the blood flow from my neck and everything else to keep me a little bit cooler and personal fans help out a lot to just blow that air and get circulation to remove that heat. Solid advice. But you think about the people you see who are working outside, like if you work in a food truck. I saw Can some ladders imagine? going up to work on, people working on roofs today. People have to work out on the streets today. I mean, there are some places where you can try all you want, but it's going to be hot and it's going to get hotter. Nah really hot and um, we know that it's a big concern for a lot of people. Yeah, I have a little bit of good news though because today is 7-Eleven, July 11th. Yeah. That means there's still time to go get a free Slurpee at 7-Eleven, so there's Kathy. something. Yeah, so oh. yeah. it might help for a minute. Don't What's you too fast, you get the brain freeze. I know, what's your favorite flavor? Me, I like turkey and giblets. <laughs> You're so weird. <laughs> Kim, how about you? I can't remember the last time I had a Slurpee. I'm guessing cherry. Yes, cherry, Coke, and lime are very okay. good together. Always do two flavors, I always think. Okay. Like turkey and giblets. Well, not they don't have meat flavors, Tom, at any huh. Seven Eleven <laughs> I've ever been to. Huh. And I'm not sure that they will. But uh, you know what? Heading to a 7-Eleven and getting a Slurpee or making a slushy at home or finding a little kiddie pool, any way you do it, it's just such a great idea to find a way to cool off because we're just starting this heat wave for Colorado. And we're tracking some isolated storms, but no rain, just wind and lightning with them. The heat wave is the big story and record highs are possible Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 96 in Denver so far, 98 in Lamar, triple digit highs out across the western slope and eastern Utah. This dome of high pressures expanding over Colorado and it will stay overhead for 72 hours. So the advisories for excessive heat include Colorado. We're going under a heat advisory here in Denver tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday for highs 98 to 103. And with the wind picking up a bit, we will be talking about high fire danger. The storms that we're seeing also producing wind and lightning, something we don't want with warm, dry conditions like this. So the moisture coming in is isolated. If you see a few sprinkles on the windshield and the foothills tonight. Count yourself lucky. It's just going to be hot and very dry and temperatures are really going to soar tomorrow. Mid 90s now we drop into the mid 80s after the sun sets tonight. I'll have the timing and impact of the impending heat wave and what this means for your outdoor weekend plans coming up in just a bit. Right now, the most extreme temperatures are still just west of us. Here is a live look of Las Vegas, Nevada, courtesy of EarthCam. Temps already hit 115. They could get to 117 at the peak of the afternoon. This is the sixth, number six, consecutive day above 115 degrees for Vegas, extending its current record. And then to the east, the remnants of Hurricane Barrel still doing damage across the country. Multiple roads in New Hampshire washed out by heavy rain there. No one was hurt, but you can see this car came dangerously close to going down into a ravine after a huge hole opened up at the edge of the road. Nearby in Vermont, rescue efforts continue after flash flooding in the northern and central parts of that state. More than 118 people needed to be saved from floodwaters yesterday, but at least one person did die. Most of the flash flooding has ended there. Rivers forecast to begin receding by the end of the day today. At least three bridges were destroyed or severely damaged and rail damage also being reported in several areas, again in Vermont. And the power outages remain a big problem in Texas after Barrel went through there. Today, more than a million people are still without power. That's a fourth day in a row there. A former police officer will spend two years in prison for killing a 17-year-old in November of 2021. Adam Holland shot and killed Peyton Blitzstein after an argument over careless driving in a neighborhood in Aurora. 
Holland resigned from the Greenwood Village Police Department just three weeks before that shooting. Nine News reporter Jaleesa Rosari was at the sentencing today, and Jaleesa, this sounds like it was extremely emotional. Yeah, Kim, there were a lot of tears on both sides of the aisle. Pey Peyton Blitzstein's family wanted the maximum punishment, which is six years in prison. The Holins wanted probation. In the end, neither family walked away whole. Steps away from the Arapahoe County Courthouse. Despair and disappointment are on display. He gets two years. It's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Todd Blitzstein waited more than two and a half years for this day. The day Adam Holen, the man who killed his 17-year-old son, Peyton Blitzstein, would be held responsible for his actions. Or so he thought. It's sad and it's a pathetic decision. Um, I thought Judge White would be a little bit smarter than this. For two hours, Judge Eric White heard from both sides of this case. The judge banned audio from being recorded, but no sound was needed to see a motion. The Blitzstein family talked about all that they lost since Peyton was killed. The Holins shared what they feared they would lose. Then Adam Holin spoke, admitting if he had never gotten out of his truck, Peyton would still be alive. Through a fit of tears, he expressed his remorse, saying, quote, I see his face in my mind every day. Remorse Peyton's friends didn't buy. Terrence Eugene was there the night of the shooting. I believe he probably regrets it now, but I, I feel like only because he's in all this trouble now. Now, Holin is going to prison. Judge White sentenced him to two years in the Department of Corrections, followed by three years of mandatory probation. A sentence, Blitzstein feels, is light and only happened because he once wore a badge. They had so many continuances that were unnecessary, and we believe that's 100 percent because he's a cop. Regardless of Holin's sentence, the Blitzstein say they're serving one too, a life without Peyton. You know, he gets two years and after two years he moves on. I don't get 56 and a half years with my son anymore. The Blitzstein family has already filed a civil lawsuit against Adam Holin that was put on hold while they waited for the criminal case to play out. Their civil attorney says the case should pick up in about 50 days. Jaleesa Rosari, 9 News. Jaleesa, it's just, you did a great job of trying to sum up some of these feelings because no one leaves feeling good. And this is, this is traumatic too, this experience. Yeah, this entire experience has been so hard on obviously both sides of this aisle. But yeah, it's hard to put into words, right? What these individuals are going through. I don't think we really can relate to them. All we can really do is share their story. Yeah, and think back what happened and, and choices, choices. All right, thank you, Jaleesa. Today, many are remembering one of the best-known actresses of the 1970s. Actress Shelley Duvall died at the age of 75. She may be best known for her role in The Shining with her co-star, Jack Nicholson. In 1981, she told the magazine the movie, now considered a horror classic, was a huge boost to her career. Other projects included Popeye with Robin Williams and the Robert Altman film at Nashville. In the 1990s, she began to pull away from acting. Her partner, Dan Gilroy, says Duvall died at her home in Texas and suffered from complications due to diabetes. With her passing today, you read about Shelley Duvall and uh, she was basically discovered by Robert Altman. She wasn't yes. trying to be an actress. She, she fell into it and became so well known. Uh, worked with Robert Altman many times, but you think of The Shining, yes. uh, which was Stanley Kubrick. And uh, I was reading today that uh, one of the scenes she did in that film required 127 takes. Yes, I heard, I heard that too. Can you imagine? Not, no, we don't have it yet. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. At about 100, you've got to think, I either can't do it or aren't doing it or we've done it and you just haven't seen it. The trailers to that movie gave me nightmares. Wow. How could you do that scene? <laughs> she was an actress. She was very good. Johnny coming through the door. Oh. Here's Johnny. Hey, tonight the ESPY Awards take place. Nikola Jokic up for the best NBA player. Of course, he won his third MVP this past season. In the ESPYs, he's up against Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, and Shea Gilgis Alexander. Colorado's other MVP nominated for an ESPY as well. Nathan McKinnon, as you might imagine, up for the best NHL player. Of course, he already won the Hart Trophy and the Ted Lindsay Award this year for the first time in his career. He'll be up against Nikita Kucherov, Austin Matthews, and Connor McDavid. We'll see if they can sweep as they did this year. Wouldn't that be in cool? Leagues. Well, uh, you, once you've won your league's MVP, do you really need an SP? 
Yeah, because you get, well, because the show's fun. I don't know, Nicola's not going to be there, I'm sure. But it's a cool thing. Right, no, no, it'd be great. It's better to win than not win. But right. you, you've also been already been called. Yeah, you probably don't League's MVP, it. so yeah, well. hopefully they do. We'll see what happens. Uh,